Father. Come on in, welcome tonight. Begin to share and invite. Glory to God. to invite and share. Hi, Doug. Hello, Anita. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Father. Come on in. Welcome. Just invite and share. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on in, welcome. Good evening, come on in. Thank you, Lord. Come on in, welcome tonight. Come on in, welcome. Come on in, welcome. Good evening, good evening. Glory to God. Come on in, welcome. Good evening. Welcome to Journey to the Word tonight. Come on in, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you tonight. Come on in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on in. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Thank you. Come on in. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome tonight. Come on in, welcome tonight to Journey Through the Word. Come on in, just begin to worship and share. Hello, hello, hello. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Come on in, welcome. Good evening, come on in, welcome. Glory to God. So come on in, welcome. Come on in, welcome, welcome, welcome to Journey Through the Word tonight. The song says, Great is Your Faithfulness. It is Wednesday night, and we are here in the Word of God. What an honor and a privilege. So go ahead and share and invite. Go ahead and say, Word of God, speak to me. Go ahead and say, supernaturally unlock my understanding to receive the revelation of the word tonight. Go ahead and share, share, share. Tag, tag, tag. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer as they're coming in. Father, we bless your name tonight. Great is your mercy. Great is your grace. Great is your faithfulness towards us tonight. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness towards us. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, you loved us so much. You, you sent your son to die on the cross for us. And so, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. And so, Lord, tonight as we, we come to read your word tonight, we pray that your word will begin to reflect in our lives. We pray that your word would transform us. We pray that your word will heal us and deliver us. We pray that your word will bring us into the truth of your light. And so, Father, tonight, let your word cleanse us. Let it be like a river that runs over our souls. 
And so, Father, for that, we give you glory. We say open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us on tonight. And we'll be so careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening tonight. Welcome to Journey Through the Word. Um, we are in Psalms 91 tonight. So come on in, grab your Bibles. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. So come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So it's good to see everybody coming on tonight. Um, we are in Psalms 91, and um, we talk, we're going to be reading a bunch of Psalms tonight, and just a quick, brief um, intro introduction to Psalms. There's three basic ways that we can read the Psalms and study the Psalms. We can read it by division, we can read it by authorship, or we can read it by subject matter. <clears throat> We can also read it by division with words, um, you know, by different words. And so if you want to read and look up words on trust, you can find a lot of psalms on trust. Um, you can find a lot of psalms by keywords. Um, so the Psalms 1 through 41, they say corresponds with Genesis. And the key word is man. So you will see that a lot in Psalms 1 through 41. In Psalms chapter 42 through 72, it corresponds with the book of Exodus. And the key word in there is deliverance. So you will see the key word deliverance uh, a lot in Psalms 42 through 72. And then chapter 73 through 89 corresponds with the book of Leviticus. And you would see the key word a lot dealing with the word sanctuary. Um, and I'll probably, you probably never thought about all of this yet. So this is a good, a good uh, learning tool for us tonight. Um, the key word is sanctuary. In Psalms chapter 90 through 106, the correspond, it corresponds with the book of Numbers. And the key word is unrest and wanderings. And then Psalms 107 through 150 corresponds with Deuteronomy. And the key word is the word of God, the word of God. Um, there are several authors in here. Um, we have uh, David. We have the sons of Korah. We have some anonymous ones. We have Asap. We have Heman, Ethan. Solomon and Moses. And so we have very uh, various author uh, through the book of Psalms and we'll try to keep you um, updated with you know who's writing each Psalms. Um, again, you can use um, the book of Psalms for devotional, you can use it um, for worship, you can use it. So you see the book of Psalms in a lot of different places. Um, you, you'll hear it quoted at funerals, at weddings, um, for graduations. You'll hear the book of Psalms a little bit everywhere because the book of Psalms, uh, you can find a lot of things to deal with the heart, deals with man, uh, deals with fools, deals with all kinds of subject matters. And so uh, you can find all kinds of things in the book of Psalms. So as we go in, go ahead and grab your Bible. We are in Psalms 91. And so just remember that the book of Psalms, we're reading chronologically. And um, we're reading in the order of the events that occurred. And so some of the Psalms are, uh, they are not in um, order. So you will see them in the order of the event that they happen. All right, Psalms 91. The theme is God's protection in the midst of danger. In the midst of danger. God doesn't promise a world free from danger, but he does promise his help whenever we face danger. 
So come on in. Um, the author to this particular psalm is anonymous. So let us read Psalms 1. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Verse 5, do not be afraid of the terrors of night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. These are a lot of great places to say yes and amen. Um, as they are being affirmed tonight, as they are being spoken over your life, as you are reading them out loud, as you are decreeing these things over your life, a lot of these places in here, you just say yes and amen. And you say, Lord, I, I receive it. I speak this over my mind. I speak rest over my soul. I, yes. Hallelujah. I speak, I speak safety over my home. And a lot of times we pray Psalms 91 because it is a prayer of protection. And so a lot of these scriptures, you need to learn how to pray the scriptures back to God. Say, Lord, you said in your word, Lord, in Psalms 91, it's, it declares that you are my shelter. It says that you are my resting place. It says that you will rescue me from every trap. Lord, I trust your word tonight. I trust that you will cover me and keep me from harm's way. I will not lay down in fear. I, Lord, I will not be afraid for you are my you are my buckler. You are my shield. You are, you are, it said you are an arrow that flies in the day. Hallelujah. So an arrow that flies in the day. I mean, it, just think about an arrow that flies in the day. Anything that is targeted at my life. Hallelujah. You are an arrow that flies by day. The Lord is, is, is protecting me. He is fighting for me. He is shielding me. He is keeping me from harm's way. So he said, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night. Hallelujah. Nor the arrow that flies in the day. He is protecting me. From every every attack of the enemy, even if it's a target attack, you know arrows. You gotta literally pull an arrow back and aim at what you want to shoot. So he said, even the don't be afraid. Even the arrows that fly by day, even if it's targeted at you, Hallelujah. He said, do not dread the disease that start, stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils would not touch you. Verse 8 he said, just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge. Did you hear that? If you're making, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot or the other Bible says strike your foot against the stone. Glory to God. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Father, we thank you tonight for the authority that you have given us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, verse 14, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. And when they call on me, I will answer. Hallelujah. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor. Did y'all see that? He said, I will be with them in in trouble. So sometimes we think that because we're in the Lord that we won't see trouble. Well, that's not true because we've seen that even in, in the Old Testament, we've seen that as they were being in, um, in captivity, he said, as you are in Babylon, you, you, 
you're in captivity. He said, pray, pray for the welfare of Babylon. Pray why? Because whatever fall on them is going to fall on you. So it doesn't mean that you won't be in dangerous places. It doesn't mean that you won't be uh, uh, have trouble. It says that, but in them, I will be with them in trouble. Ooh, glory to God. That's a blessing. I will be with them in trouble. So that means that when trouble come, God is with you. God is standing with you. That's why he said you don't have to fear. You don't have to buckle. You don't have to get well. Why? Because I'm in the trouble with you. He said, I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It says that God is a shelter. He is a refuge when we're afraid. The writer's faith in God as protector will carry it. It said it will carry him through all dangers and fears. Let me say that again. The writer's faith in God. It said it will carry him through all dangers and fears of life. We was in Bible study tonight, not um, and we were doing emotionally healthy relationships. And we start off with a devotion reading, and it was talking about um, uh, the woman in the alabaster box. And it was just talking about, you know, some people were criticizing her of why would she pour this alabaster box, this expensive perfume on Jesus's feet? Why would she pour this, pour this on him? And so she was being criticized. And it says, the reason why she poured it on him, it starts with a heart condition. It starts with your mind being made up, hallelujah, of your faithfulness to Christ, your love for Christ. is, And so when you know your love for Christ and you have determined that and fixed it in your mind, then that will solve all other circumstances because you already have your stance of, of how you feel and what, what your decision is going to be based off of before trouble arise, right? Before trouble arise, before a circumstance, my mind is already fixed. My mind is already made up. She has already established her relationship. She has already established the worth, the worth of who he is in her life before anything come along. So I, when it come along, I don't have to be uh, uh, wavery. I don't have to be tossed to and fro in the midst of a storm, my mind is already made up of who I'm going to serve, who I'm in love with, and I'm not compromising that. So storm come what may, storm come what may, my mind is already made up. Jesus is first in my life. Jesus is all that matters in my life. Jesus come in. And so come what may, it don't matter what come. The, the bottom line is I already got my foundation set in Jesus. So it's, it's, it's talking here about the writer's faith in God. The, we don't let situations come to determine what our faith is. Our, my faith is established before I enter into a situation. Before I enter into a situation, before the storm comes, before the plague comes, before, be, before. So sometimes we allow, we wait till we get in situations and we, we let situations try to dictate whether we got faith or not. Well, he didn't heal me, so I'm just going to turn back. So, so you allowing, Lord have mercy, Psalms 92, Psalms 92. Y'all forgive me, I am not preaching tonight, I'm going to read. Psalms 92, again, the author is anonymous and this scripture is... Uh, the theme is be thankful and faithful every day. This psalm was used in the temple services on Sabbath. On Sabbath. Verse 1, it said, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning your faithfulness in the evening. Come on in, welcome tonight. 
Uh, we are on in Psalms 92, that would be page 862 if you have the Chronological Bible. Page 862, Psalms 92. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by the ten-string harp and the melody of the lyre. So this is um, it's a song to be sung on the Sabbath day. Verse 4, you will thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. Ha! Just take a moment right there. Just take a moment. It said, you will thrill me with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. Oh, Lord, what great works you do. How deep are your thoughts? Only a simpleton would not know. And only a fool would not understand this. Though the wicked sprout like weeds, evil do and evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. Verse 8, but you, O oh Lord, woo, you will be exalted forever. Your enemies, Lord, will surely perish. All evildoers will be scattered. But you have made, ah, glory to God. But you, there's, them butts will get you all the time. But you have made me as strong as a wild ox. You have anointed me with the finest oils. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the dead defeat of my wicked opponents. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Glory to God, the godly will flourish. Verse 13, for they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our Lord. Now, I don't know if you know palm trees, look at that, are known for their long life. Long life. He said, you will be like a palm tree. They're known for long life. To flourish like palm trees means to stand tall and to live long. Stand tall and live. You ought to prophesy that to somebody in this chat. Put their name in there and say, stand tall and live long. And that's the word that's spoken over the godly. That's a word for you. That's a word for me. The, the godly. The godly will flourish like palm trees. Stand tall and live long. The cedars of Lebanon grew to 120 feet in height and up to 30 feet in circumference. They were solid, strong, and immovable. I need you to hear that. Can somebody type those three words? They were solid, they were strong, and they were immovable. They were solid, they were strong, and they were immovable. Unmoved. The writer saw believers as upright, strong, unmovable by the winds and circumstances. Glory. You hear that? Strong and unmovable by the circumstances that life has. Those who place their faith firmly in God can have this strength and vitality. Woo! So you might get, you might, you might, the wind may come and you might get knocked down. You might feel like the rain came and it might have drenched your hair. It may have clouded up the day. It may have muddied up your walk. But it said you will not be moved circumstances come and go but I will be solid I will be strong and I will be unmovable you know solid is really talking about because a lot of times people faith is wavered in circumstances a lot of times people are uprooted 
because of a financial situation. They uprooted because they went through a divorce. They get uprooted because they in some type of medical situation. They uprooted because they downtrodden. And it's like, why should I be, talk to your soul. Why should I be downtrodden, old soul? My, my faith, my trust will be in the Lord. I will put my trust in the Lord. I will not be moved. Going through a storm in life, I would, I, it's okay to go through a storm. He's in the storm with me. He will carry me through the storm. He will bring me through the storm. And I might, that storm might shipwreck a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm coming out the storm and I'm still going to be in my right mind. I'm coming out this storm and I'm still going to have my strength. I'm coming out this storm. I might be holding on to the horns of the altar, but I'm coming out this storm. And I'm going to be in my right mind. You're not sending me to the crazy house. I'm not going to be smoking weed and smoking drunk. I'm not going to drink my problems away. I'm not going to depend on wine to soothe my soul to go to sleep at night. I know I will put my faith He is my strength. That's where I get my strength from. That's where I get my peace from. Like a palm tree, I shall flourish. I shall grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon, for they are, it said they transplanted to the Lord's own house. Do you know that transplanted, it reminds us that we was once in darkness, that we once belonged, hallelujah, to the, to the foolishness of this world. We was once children of darkness, but honey, to be transplanted, means to be it, it, that come on it means to come on take me out of what was take me out take me out of what was and it means to take me and plant me hallelujah in a new environment so so that's god taking us out of darkness and bringing us into his marvelous light taking us from being children of darkness to being children of light he's talking about you've been transplanted You've been given, I took out that old stony heart and I've given you a new heart. I've given you, I took out that old mind. I've given you a new mind, the mind of Christ. I, I've been transplanted. He said, for they are transplanted to the Lord's house. Ooh. They flourish. They, listen to this. They flourish in the courts of our God. Hey, glory to God. Woo, they flourish in the course of our God, even in old age. Come on. When I get old, I'm still be strong. When I get old, I'm still have my strength. When I get old, I'm still have my right mind. When I get old, I'm going to still be enjoying because my spirit is going to be of youth. I, I'm not going to be walking around acting like I'm, I, I'm just old. No, my spirit is revived. I have vitality in the spirit realm. Oh, glory to God. It said they will remain vital and green. That's that whole spirit of you. You older now, you need to go sit down somewhere. Look, that's an old religious dead spirit. And it ain't part of the, 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 the kingdom. The kingdom says you full of it, vitality. You full of the spirit. You full of the spirit. You will remain. You remain in me. You remain vital and green. Hey, that's life, y'all. Vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just. He is my rock. There's no evil in him. Psalms 93. Psalms 93, the theme is God's unchanging and almighty nature. His creation reminds us of glory to God. His creation reminds us of his great power. Y'all give me a second. Mm. Verse one. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. 
Indeed, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. The floods have risen up, O Lord. The floods have roared like thunder. The floods have lifted their pounding waves. But mightier than the violent raging of the seas, mightier than the breakers of the shore, the Lord above is mightier than these. Your royal laws cannot be changed. Your reign, O Lord, is holy forever. And instantly as I was reading that, the song came to my mind. It says, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. And they just talk about how mighty he is and how excellent he is in the earth. Psalms 94. Psalms 94. The theme is God will keep his people from the severe punishment awaiting the wicked. And since God is holy and unjust, we can be certain that the wicked will not prevail. The author of this Psalm is anonymous. Verse 1. O Lord, the God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, let your glorious justice shine forth. Arise, O judge of the earth. Give the proud what they deserve. How long, O Lord? How long will the wicked be allowed to gloat? How long will they speak with arrogance? How long would these evil people boast? They crush your people, Lord, hurting those you claim as your, your own. They kill widows and foreigners and murder orphans. The Lord isn't looking, they say. And besides, the God of Israel doesn't care. Think again, you fools. When will you finally catch on? Is he deaf, the one who made your ears? Is he blind? the one who formed your eyes. He punishes the nations. Won't he also punish you? He knows everything. Doesn't he also know what you're doing? The Lord knows people's thoughts. He knows they are worthless. Verse 12, joyful are those you discipline, Lord. Those you teach with your instructions. You give them relief from troubled times, troubled times, until a pit is dug to capture the wicked. The Lord will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special possession. Judgment will again be found on justice and those with virtuous hearts will pursue it. Who will protect me from the wicked? Who will stand up for me against evildoers? Unless the Lord had helped me, I would soon have settled in the silence of the grave. This scripture too, you could just see that the the writer of this psalm, he has put his trust in the Lord and he acknowledges that if it had not been for the Lord, he said, unless the Lord had helped me, I would soon have settled in the silence of the grave. He said, I cried out, I'm slipping, but your unfailing love Oh, Lord, supported me. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Woo! Woo! Y'all ever had that? When doubts try to fill your mind, said, Yo, you gave me renewed hope and cheer. Can unjust leaders claim that God is on their side? Leaders who decrees permit injustice? They gang up against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord is my fortress. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. God will turn the sins of evil people back on them. He will destroy them for their sins. The Lord our God will destroy them. And this just reminds us too, when we're still talking about being unmovable, this is just talking about 
sometimes we want vengeance to happen in our time. And I think Pastor Reese talked about this a little bit. But sometimes we want vengeance to happen in our time. And sometimes, the, you know, depending on the, the hurt or, you know, um, we want stuff. We want it, we want it to be quickly uh, uh, accounted for. We want to see... We want to see justice happen quickly. And so sometimes we can think that because God is not moving in our time, that God is not God is not just, he's not timely. And so this is a place where we have to constantly remind ourselves, you know, as we see things unjust is going on in the world and unjust leaders and all these different things and unjust you know, um, it, people in positions and we just see no justice. Um, and sometimes we can get frustrated, but this is a, a place where we have to trust that God will bring vengeance. God will judge. God will uh, deal with people. Um, and we can trust that every person will have to be accountable to God for their actions and we can trust God. So be careful. And let me say this, be careful of playing little God. God ain't going to handle it, so I'm going I'm going to handle it myself or I'm going to punish him myself or what I'm about to say to them is going to punish them or I'm going to cut them off and I'm not going to talk to them no more. That's punishment. You have whether you like it or not, you have served them a sentence. You did this, and what your punishment is, is you are no longer my friend. You're no longer allowed in my space. You're no longer allowed on my media sites. You know, So we've, we have served them a punishment. So you really sentenced them in your own way. And so we really stepped in, and we played the role of God because we saying, God, I'm not trusting this situation to you. So I'm going to punish them. You're not dealing fast enough. So I'm going to hold them accountable for this. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to judge. So we have to be careful that we don't play God, that we don't take matters into our own hands, that we don't try to, we don't try to, um, punish people. <laughs> we're going to take justice in our own hand and we're going to punish them and we're going to serve them notice. And so be careful. You have to literally say, I am putting the situation in the hands of God. Lord, I am trusting you to that you, you all knowing, you all seeing, and I'm trusting that you see the situation and I'm trusting you that you're going to handle it in your timing. So we can pray that God will provide us comfort in the midst of it. We can pray that God will give us peace. We can pray for peace for families or people that's involved and impacted by it. We could try to comfort. We could try to support them through it. But don't play God. Psalms 95. This is an invitation to worship God, and the author is anonymous. Verse 1 says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods he holds in his hands the depths of the earth the mightiest of the mountains the sea belongs to him for he made it his hands formed the dry land too verse 6 said come let us worship and bow down that's the invitation come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today, the Lord says. Don't harden your hearts as Israel did at Meribah, as they did at Massa in the wilderness. 
for there your ancestors tested and tried my patience. And even though they saw everything I did, for 40 years I was angry with them. 40 years, I'm just looking for my rag. For 40 years I was angry with them. And I said they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So guys, again, note here that he's talking about a hardened heart that has chose to disobey him, to try his patience, and to turn away from him. And he said, a hardened heart is as useless as a hardened lump of clay or a hardened loaf of bread. Nothing can restore it and make it useful. So the writer is warns against hardening our hearts to resist God's will. So guys, you have to see that, that resisting God's will is hardening your heart against God. And it talks about that. They did it for 40 years. Now you can go back and you done read, we done read through Exodus. You can go back and you know ways that they hardened. They worship other gods. They kept turning. They wouldn't obey. They kept, we know uh, the stories of how the Israelite, they said they had been so convinced that God couldn't deliver them that they simply lost their faith. And so it said when people become so stubbornly set in their ways, their hearts are hardened. They find it impossible to turn to God. And they said this doesn't happen all at once. It's a result of a series of choices to disregard God's will. <laughs> so if God, Lord help us, they said if you resist God long enough, God may toss you aside like a hardened bread, useless and worthless. I don't ever want to be in that position to where it's just like, I'm so stubborn, I can't listen. So then God got to, he got to let us be like the children of Israel. I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm going to prolong your, your stay in the wilderness because you, you, you rebellious. Yes, serious choices, Pastor K. I'm going to prolong your stay in the wilderness because of your choices. I don't want to stay in the wilderness. He left them in the wilderness as a part of a lesson in life. You want you want to take the long the long lesson? No, Lord, <laughs> I don't need to go. I don't need to go that that route. Some routes you just don't need to take. All right. Um, he says, so in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. They refuse to do what I would tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Psalms 96. Psalms 96. Glory to God. Psalms 96. Um, the author is anonymous. anonymous. It's a possibility, David, because the song closely resembles David's hymns of praise in 1 Chronicles 16. This theme is how to praise God. We can sing about him, tell others about him, worship him, give him glory, bring offerings to him, and live holy lives. All right? Verse 1, it says, sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Each day, proclaim the good news that he saves. Hallelujah. Each day. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. 
Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering. Come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nation, the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. Verse 11, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise before the Lord, for he is coming. Glory to God. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. So I just, Lord, this is how to praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We was in church. You praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath praise him. It says sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song. Sing out. Sing of his praises. Hallelujah. Be overwhelmed about his goodness. Hallelujah. Worship him in all that you do. Worship him in your giving. Worship him in the dance. Worship him in clapping your hands. Worship him in song. Worship him. Hallelujah. It said worship him by living holy lives. Just worship. Glory to God. Psalms 97. Psalms 97. Hallelujah. Sing about his majesty. Sing about his goodness. Sing, sing, sing. Be a witness in the earth. Sing, sing, sing. And say, publish his glorious deeds. Hallelujah. Tell everybody. Post it. Sing it. Pass it. I, whatever you can do. Make a stamp in the earth. Hallelujah. Psalms 97. It says um, the author is anonymous. The theme is God, our awesome conqueror, is righteous and just. The Lord is king. The earth rejoice. Let the far farthest, farthest, farthest coastlands be glad. Verse 2, dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. So this one, guys, if you ponder here, and I'm not going to even go into this because it's just, but I want you to think about that because, you know, we know that God is light, but God also dwells in darkness. Okay, I need you to capture that. Dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire spreads ahead of him and burns up all his foes. His lightning flashes out across the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness. Every nation sees his glory. Those who worship idols are disgraced. All who brag about their worthless gods, for every god must bow to him. Thank you, Father. Jerusalem has heard and rejoiced, and all the towns of Judah are glad because of your justice, O Lord. That's so powerful. That whole thing when they say, and every, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. So you sometimes we look and it just look like all these different religions and all these different people doing all kinds of stuff. They say, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess he is Lord. It says in verse 9, for you, O Lord, are supreme over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the lives of his godly people. Rescue them from the power of the wicked. Light shines on the godly and joy on those whose hearts are right. Thank you, Father. 
joy on those whose hearts are right. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. This is where you always hear people like, um, sometimes you hear people say, shouldn't nobody have to make you praise the Lord? Shouldn't nobody ever have to force you to praise the Lord? Shouldn't nobody have to cheer you? Nobody should have to get up and cheer you and root you on to praising the Lord. And so sometimes it can be frustrating to sit and watch people just try to make you, you ought to clap your hands. If you woke up this morning, clap your hands. If you got breath in your body, clap your hands. Often the problem is people don't understand who God is. They don't know, they, they know that there's a God, but they don't understand. They haven't read through the Bible. They don't understand all of God's goodness and his virtues and his, this. we've just been the church. We've just, we've seen church. We, we just know to clap and we just know to be religious and, and raise your hands and lift your hands. And you, if God been good, y'all lift your hands. But guys, if, if we really teach people the word of God and they get to know who God is from beginning to end and know what he's done and 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 how the Savior came into the, into their lives and what what sacrifices will was made for them and and they and they get to see the process of the of the journey that led to their salvation and then they get to understand who God is in the in his salvation and and when they get to saying that and you teach them this, and then when you get here and it talks about may all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. You who love the Lord, you who you who who he protects, you who he rescues, you who so it's it's we gotta go back to the basics and and begin to really Set the foundation of your relationship with God so that you can worship God from a place of, hey, you ain't got to tell me to say praise the Lord. You ain't even got to ask me to praise the Lord because I'm going to sing of his goodness because of who he is and because of what I know and because I, and because I know whose I am and who's. And so because of that, it, it, it's in my it, it's in my mouth. It's on it's on, it's in the fruit of my lips. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's in the it, you know. So when I it's 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 my nature to worship him. Just like it's the trees' nature is that you know the wind blow and they just you this and the birds they fly and they just naturally chirp and and you know it's certain things that just naturally do what they do. You know when we understand who we are, it's a part of our nature. To worship, it's a part of who we are. To, to it is, it's what we do. It's what we, it's what we do. Is who we are. Like human beings is the only one that out of God's creation that you got to tell them to to worship. You know, the birds get up and they automatically start chirping. They automatically, the, the wind blowing the trees automatically start flowing. And you know, it, it's just we are the only ones. You go to go to an ocean and you just can watch dolphins just jumping up and just jumping up out of just flopping up all throughout the sea. You go look and fishes are just swimming and they flapping and swimming. And, and then we look at human beings and you got to say, you ought to praise the Lord. You ought to give God glory. You need to bless him. You, yes, Pastor Kay, if creation will worship you, so will I. I was created to worship him. We were created in his image. We were created to give him glory. We were created. And so this is where it says, let all the godly people rejoice. Guys, it ought to be automatic. It ought to be automatic. You ought to come into the house of God with worship in your mouth. Anytime we got to root people on to, to praise the Lord, maybe it's because we need to remind them. We need to remind them in our call to worship 
who he is, what he has done. And then we lead them to worship, lead them into the presence of the Lord, lead them before the Lord, and we and we become a witness to them. But when we just be like trying to make a false praise God and they don't have a clue of what they praise and vote, we, you know, and so as worship leaders, this is why they had the, the worship leaders. The worship leaders would lead them into worship, lead them into worship, not force folks to worship. Tell them that, you know, this ain't exercise class. Come on, kick your leg, turn around three times, stump your feet. No, lead them into worship. All right, Psalms 98. A song of joy and victory because God is victorious over evil. And those who follow him will be victorious with him when he judges the earth. Psalms verse 1. Psalms 91 verse 1. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. You see that? Sing a new song to the Lord. Why? Right, tap your neighbor. <laughs> tap your neighbor. He says, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. Right? I love this. His right hand has won a mighty victory. So as we talk, telling you to sing, why? I love this because he's won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. They might say, how? You might have to tell them how. And has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have, have seen the victory of our God. Verse 4 says, shout to the Lord all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and melodies song. Melodies melody, songs. Melodies songs. A melodious, a melodious song. Melodia, a melodious song. Song full of melody, right? With trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn, make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the King. Like it's like combine all these things together. Get your horn, get your get your tambourine, bring your voice, bring, bring your harp, and let's bring all these things together to make a melody of song before the Lord with trumpets and the sound of ram's horn make a joyful sympathy before the Lord the King. Let the sea and look at that. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Now that's again we was just talking about the birds and the fish and the things and everything just let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. So the next time you walk outside and you see the wind blowing and you see the trees, just as Pastor Kate was saying, as creation worship you, say, Lord, so will I. When you go to the ocean and you see the rivers and the high water and the, and the ripples in the water and just say, if creation will worship you, so will I. When you work, wake up and you hear the birds and you see the squirrels running up the tree and grabbing nuts and then running all, you say, if creation will worship you, so will I. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. For the Lord is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with his justice and the nation with his fairness. Psalms 99. Praise for the Lord, God's fairness and holiness, because God is perfectly just and fair. We can trust him completely. The Lord is king. Let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne between the cherubims and let the whole earth quake. The Lord sits in majesty in Jerusalem, exalted above all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy, mighty king lover of justice. You have established fairness. You have acted with justice and righteousness throughout Israel. Verse 5, exalt the Lord our God. Bow low whew, before his feet for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also called on his name. They cried to the Lord for help and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar 
of cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O oh Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them. Hallelujah. But you punished them when they went wrong. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem for the Lord our God is holy. Psalms 100. This is an invitation to enter joyfully into God's presence. His faithfulness extends to our generation and beyond. Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing and with joy. Singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Hallelujah. He made us and we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. As we close out tonight, the next time, guys, we whip somebody and, and we want to say praise the Lord. Let's make sure that we're taking the time to say, give, give a few prerequisites. Pre, give, give a few sentences before of here's a reason why I think we should praise the Lord. Let's, let's give God praise because. And let's talk about maybe give us a one statement on because of who he is. And maybe you want to talk about like because of his greatness, his unfailing love, his forgiving power. Let's praise him because of what he done for us. Let's praise him because. And so we want to make sure that we're just not making assumptions. We talked about that tonight. Let's just not make assumptions. Let's clarify. Let's clarify that we know that you know who he is. That we're just not praying and we're walking away like, well, I think everybody know who God is and everybody know why we should worship and everybody know why we should pray. Don't make assumptions because that person may not know. Nobody never really told me what worship meant. I just think it meant throw your hands up. I just meant because you said it, that's what I do. Let's not make assumptions. Let's really take the time and, and clarify God's goodness. Do you know what he done for you? Do you know how he saved you? Do you know why you saved? Do you know what salvation means? Do you know? Do you know? So as we pray for people and we enter people into worship, let's make sure when we say, everybody lift your hands. We don't want to tell everybody to lift their hands. We want to give them a reason to lift their hands. So let's not cheer people into worship. Let's lead people into worship. I'm going to say that one more time. Let's not cheer people into worship. Let's lead people into worship. Let's not cheer. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody stump your feet. I'm going to count to three and you need to run and jump and skip and swing. And No. Let's lead them into worship because of who he is and because of what he done. And then you can name some things and name who he is and because of his sovereignty and name some virtues about him and because of his goodness, talk a little bit about his goodness. Because of his saving grace, talk about how he saved. Because of Calvary, talk about him. Because of his love, talk about what his love done for us and say, and before that reason, can we talk about for that reason, we lift our hands. Hey, glory to God. For that reason, we say hallelujah. For that reason, we give him the highest praise and the highest praise. We may have to lift our hands and we may, we may reverence him because of this. Lead them into worship. So Father, tonight, your name is holy. Your name is righteous. Your name, oh God, 
is all powerful. And Father, because of who you are, you are our Father. You are our Lord. You are our King. You are our Savior. You are our, our God of justice. You are our loving Father because of who you are and because of what you've done. Father, you have kept me. You, you, you are keeping me. You have saved me and delivered me. You have healed me. You have provided for me. You have kept me through danger seen and unseen. For this reason, we say hallelujah. For this reason, we give you glory. For this reason, we lift our hands and we say thank you. So Father, tonight, help us to lead people into your presence. This is an invitation. The Lord wants or he wants us to worship and reverence him. This is an invitation, but we can't assume that people know. Some people are just doing because we saying, like Simon says, clap your hands. Simon says, turn around. We want to make sure that if creation will worship him, so will we. We are created in his, in his image and created for his glory and created for his pleasure and created. So Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you. As we wake up in the morning, I pray that you would give us a new song. Let us sing a new song unto the Lord and let us give you the highest praise in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, hallelujah, for the young lady uh, that Anita lifted up tonight. We want to lift her up in prayer. And so, Father, um, to those who need prayer tonight, for the families that need prayer, uh, there's some situations that's going on, Father, and Lord, some just need a little hope, a little comfort, a little assistance. So, Father, tonight, we lift these families before you. And Lord, you are all-knowing, you're all-seeing, you know everything concerning them. So, Father, we're asking that we by your sovereignty, Lord, would you, would you uplift these families? Would you uplift this young lady, God, by the strength of your name, Lord? Would you heal? Would you deliver? Would you comfort? Would you, would you give peace tonight? Would you, be, would you be a miracle worker? Would you just divine interruption in the midst of what's going on? Father, show yourself strong. Show yourself mighty, merciful, loving and caring and so father we trust lord these families into your care tonight and lord we trust that you will take care of them in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen god bless you all we will see you on tomorrow have a wonderful night